Hi Suya Beans, welcome back! Today we are back with Dracula Love Story and finally it's time for some action with Mehmet! Mm. Episode 6, The Tower Rafi, is everything okay? I don't know, who is Rafi? What do you mean who? You are! You are mistaken. What happened to her? That I would initially take and as a joke made me shrink back. I had been deceived by appearances so many times before that now I was afraid to even imagine who might be disguised as a guest from the bright words or why. She got up and stepped toward me, her smile contoured into a grimace. Who are you? What do you want? But suddenly she pressed her hands to her face and shook her head. I don't know who I am, I can't remember. Her confusion was so sincere that I forgot about my own fear. Really? You don't remember who you are? Not at all. I woke up and everything around was strange and foreign. I don't know where I'm from, but this place definitely isn't where I belong. I feel so unwell here. You are Rafi from the Bright World. You came here with Vlad. But she remained completely bewildered. Leo knocked on the door and entered the room. I'm so glad you are here. Something's wrong with her memory. While I explained, Rafaela sat on the floor, hugging herself. Oh, poor girl. Her lips were trembling as her eyes wandered anxiously. Leo took a step toward her, but Rafi jerked away in fear, making him step back immediately. She's getting worse. This isn't her word. Who knows why it's affecting her this way. What do we do? Inform those who sent her. But how? Concealer sent... Concealer Septentrion should know. I can find no one and ask him to pass on the message. Leo checked his watch. The Soydans are waiting to have breakfast with us. Right after that, I think we should go to Vlad. We still don't know how he's doing. And Sandra and Nusratu are coming. We need to meet them, but Rafi's situation seems more urgent. Go to the dark ones. I will look after her and handle the rest. I held his hands tightly and gave him a soft kiss on the lips. Leo, I'm so happy I got you. Just your presence, your voice, your calmness give me hope that everything will be fine. His large hand ran at the back of my head and pulled me closer. A kiss deepened for a few moments, filled with the sweetness that can come only before parting. Things will be fine. Come back soon. I changed quickly and spun the top. So you can like just walk around between two words just like that. Wow. On the other side there was a closet from which a spacious office was visible. Noe stood in its center, motionless, hands at his sides, his eyes strangely focused on a single point. That's suspicious. But before I even had time to be surprised, I heard a voice from across the room and saw another Noe, just like the first one. Don't stand there like a statue, you are fake at the tomb, but you are still alive, not a mummy. The first one blinked and relaxed his posture slightly. He said cautiously, Mr. Noe, you are going to the world of humans, aren't you? It's better to keep quiet about it, dear. Dear? Are they a girl? I just wanted to, please, if you can, bring me some of their berries. Oh, I miss Brighty so much, and the castle, and the people. Miriam? I stepped out of my hiding place. The first Aditum bounced like a little kid and rushed to hug me. I'm so glad to see you. The second Noe just grumbled. I need to take that top from you. This isn't what it was made for. Right, I'm not a peach pie. You would be delighted to see that. Considering how Miri pounced on you, I'm glad you are not a pie. I wouldn't stand for someone else's hands on it. He snapped his fingers and I saw a different face in front of me. Oh, you are so... Miriam giggled quietly and stepped back towards the wall. I patted Noe's shoulders. Are you ready to put up with me touching you, great Aditum? Let me hug you, you grump. 
The door suddenly bugged open. Maya managed to slip into the closet like a shadow. I put my hands away from Noe, but it was too late. The person who walked in saw us before I could react. Aditum Oculus? Aditum Noe? How should I take this? A bath servant in your abode and touching you? Mm, how dare she? You have neglected the hierarchy by sharing your space with an inferior. To what end? <laughs> I think he is just jealous. Like, look at him. I remind you that an auditum must dedicate all their time and energy to contemplating matters of the utmost importance. The visitor turns sternly toward me. Answer, unfortunate one. Why are you here? How dare you touch the master? To see if it's time to take his room to be one. That's just too funny. You are distracting a superior over some rope, but I'm not surprising from the likes of you. But you, Aditum Noe, shouldn't have even let her in the door. Oh, I got minus luck, no. My fault, she got me talking and I was distracted. That's why we are watching you, young one. Not out of spite, but concern. Send her away and don't make such mistakes in the future. Casting a disdainful glance at me, the auditum left slamming the door. Mayon peeked out from the closet, looking scared. It's a good thing you were still here. I would have died of fright in front of him, but the other one will be here any time now. Yes, we need to hurry just one moment. See you. As you can see, a maid's attire is not the best choice in our world. Let's dress you as a dog priestess. They have high status and authority. Dress like this in the future if you decide to come here. Now the headpiece. I wish there were more colors. I don't think uh, blonde really suits her. Now you're ready. Let's go. He snapped his fingers, restoring Miriam's auditorium guys, and wrapped his arms around me. Follow the plan from now on, Mary. Got it? Got it. Good luck with both of you. As soon as we found ourselves in a different room, Noe hurried to the device on the table and started adjusting something. Is this your workshop for creating human bodies? No longer mine. Now it's Alpharatus. Just like the position of master of bodies. He is the considered student as well, an excellent one, unlike me, and irritatingly perfect. So, what are we doing here? Retrieving my human body so I can go to you. Because if you are here, it means you need my help again, right? Rafi lost her memory. I wanted to ask you to find a concealer so he could pass a message. But that doesn't require an earthly body. Yes, especially since it's inaccessible. Now he slapped the edges of the device with his hands in vexation. Inaccessible because you are an auditum? That too, but last time I managed to steal it. Now I can't. It's locked. Aww. There was a rustling sound. Now he pulled me to the side, but we didn't have a chance to hide. Just as I suspected. My greetings to the lovely priestess. It seems we are already acquainted. I partially ruined my face. Hello, Concealer. The demon's eyes sparkled. My lady, you are exquisite. But be careful. If the other priestess see you, they will be displeased. Why? Because you outshine them all. Oh, thank you so much. Teacher, you are the one who blocked access to my body. Do you think you could wander around with it among the humans whenever you pleased? Don't you understand how dangerous that is? I took precautions. Indeed, he obliged offer us the new master to regularly report to Aditum Noe at length. But it's a doppelganger and not the actual Noe who listens to the reports, nodding and looking clever. Ah, oh, he's so busted. And during that time, you sneak into the empty workshop to steal back your earthy body? You see, it's all planned out. Noe, you are risking Miriam yourself and the safety of the entire world. 
just to tease Morthos or for what this time? That's right, you were going to go to the humans before I even showed up. Why? No, he glared at me. Because you are there, my friends. Oh, no, he... You know that after Vlad's detainment, the massive black vortex, the uh, harbinger of the catastrophe looming over all worlds, didn't diminish. Quite the opposite, it grew larger. So the council decided that he wasn't the culprit and released your friend. But the one in whom the true threat lies remains free and could be anywhere, taking on any of our forms. Hmm. You are talking to me now, but what if it's not me anymore, and it's nearly impossible to tell? The stolen artifact of energies allows the one using it to assume not only the subject's size, but also habits, manners, and thought patterns. That sounds very dangerous. That's here in the dark world, but for the earthy world, he still needs a physical body. While I was in charge of the bodies, he couldn't get one, but now it's different. That's why I started demanding reports from Alfred, and from them I learned that he had studied Istanbul meticul meticulously. The city where Sio was invited and where Vlad was relocated to. Created a body from the William who is now in Istanbul. Noe nodded proudly and said to the concealer, You see, an intelligent person, even an outsider, would find this obvious. Yes, I believe Alfred could have created a body for someone who is very interested in being at the center of current events. Evil can be both here and there in your world. That's why I have to visit the earthy world, to protect those I care about. Do you understand, teacher? No, I don't believe that Alfred would bypass the regulations to create a body. It's a severe violation and he's so principled and proper. Not voluntarily, no, but what if he was forced? Hmm. Septentrion pondered, but I had to interrupt his thoughts. I'm sorry, but an urgent matter brought me here. Rafaela, I told him about what happened to her. The concealer shook his head. The inhabitants of the bright world, when they go to the earthy world, forget who they are and where they are from. Those are the rules of the game. We thought Miss Rafaela wouldn't be affected because she is human faced and not a bright one. But apparently, they have spent so long in the upper world that it's begun to affect them as well. We need to inform Chairman Ur and retrieve her from your world as soon as possible. But what about Olad? After all, it was Rafi who was staying close and creating the illusion that he was human. So that's why after jumping from the ship that became a monster again, he was always in that form, the illusion simply dissipated. Oh wow. It's a complicated question. I'm afraid he will have to hide from everyone in the fortress for the time being. Have a nice day, my lady. The concealer bowed and disappeared. Noi. You knew that the William might be in Istanbul and send me there. Um, thought I wasn't the one he needed. I don't know, see, I'm sorry I put you in danger. But if you were his target, he would have reached you anyway. Whatever this evil is, we need to find it. That's the only way to unravel this devilish tangle of events. If he is there in another body, perhaps we have already crossed paths. What if someone from the Soylent family? Are you accusing Mahmed? Or, um, what's his name, Hassan? Very likely, the head of their family is particularly suspicious. You should be very careful, but don't avoid him. Try to learn as much as possible. I thought you already knew a lot about him. You were so good at provoking him during the forum. My analyzer indicated that Vlad was about to encounter an old enemy, the object of his deepest hatred. There was only one such candidate and I prepared for the encounter. But we have yet to learn where he came from or who he truly is. I told Noe about the incident with the wave of the Bosporus and how Magma disappeared from the ship. And also she had easy a story from the morning regarding the mysterious uncle who had lived with them 20 years ago. Interesting. He turned to the apparatus and started adjusting something again. 
If we add this new data, the analyzer might provide more information. Please bring me the cards, the fifth shelf in the wooden box on top. I hurried in the direction he indicated. The thought of revealing Magmat's secret even partially had me quite excited. I stopped, scanned the shelves, and saw a long wooden box. I reached for it, but it felt as if it was stuck to the surface. I was afraid to damage something in the workshop, so I didn't pull harder. I better ask for help. Noe, can you come over? I can't get the box down. Sure, I will be right there. Soon, he was by my side, shaking his head. He smirked. You got the wrong shelf. And the box won't move because it's a mechanism that opens a hidden niche. Really? What's inside it? Spooky skeletons and bloody corpses? Just kidding, it's junk. Push the box to the right and you will see. I did as he told me. The box slid smoothly as if on invisible rails. Something clicked, followed by the ringing, crackling sound. The shelf moved aside, revealing a dark gap. Oh my god. <laughs> that looks so creepy. Who is that? You. From inside, the body tumbled out right onto me. Lifeless, disfigured. It was enveloped in black slime that stretched in long, thick threads. The face was frozen in primal terror and something was wriggling all over the corpse's skin. Worms? You. I caught them bumping to Noe. He had me close, trying to shield me with his arms. Panicking, I buried my face against his shoulder, trembling and shuddering. What? Well, uh, what is this? Who? Who is this? Alfred, the master of creating human bodies. He has been murdered. I felt like I couldn't breathe. Now he grabbed my shoulders and locked eyes with me, firmly. You need to go back. I have to report this. There will be an investigation. You can stay here. Yes. We relocated back to the office. Mr. Noe, he didn't show up. You guessed with his report. I know, Mary, and he won't come anymore. Not at all, are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. The young demon Ness was so happy that she didn't notice our state. Then send me back to the humans if I'm not needed here anymore. I know everyone has left the castle, but maybe I can be useful where Mr. Vlad is staying now? Miri, this is not the right time. Please, I don't want to go back home to Foraminis, to those icy, desolate lands. Noe, let her. Despite my own inner turmoil, Miriam's plea touched me deeply. Her eyes were filled with such naive joy and a longing for a better life. Getting away from where she is from and simply working as a maid would be a dream come true for her. All right, Mimi, we will find a place for you. Thank you so much, and to you, Miss Seal. He led me into the closet. Return safely, and I will bring you news as soon as I can. Bye. When I found myself back in my room, Leo was the only one there. See, are you okay? You look like you have seen a dead man. Well, I just saw a dead man. <laughs> yes, where is Ruffy? They took her away. The people who were in the dome by the castle. They said we reacted in time and her memories can still be restored. Yay! Sandra and Nosferatu landed safely. I arranged their transportation to West Fortress. We will meet them there. What happened in the dark world? I told him about the gruesome discovery behind the shelf and everything I had learned. That's some news. I'm sure whoever killed the poor guy was the same person the body was created for. He was getting rid of a witness. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if someone from that charming family turns out to be the body. Well, it's time to go to Vlad. Sandra must already be there. We enter the living room. Breakfast had long ended, but Izzy was still there. See, with everything alright, she didn't come to eat with us. Yes, I had a bit of a headache. I understand. And are you leaving? Yes, we are going to visit Vlad's and our friend Sandra. She arrived today as well. I hope you will come back soon and have time for the painting. 
And in the evening, we have another forum event. Be sure to come with your friends. Thank you, Ezio. The Fatih bridge was closed for repairs, so we had to take a detour. But we finally arrived at Rumeli. The residential quarters were in the most well-maintained part of the fortress. Someone was waiting for us in the living room. Hooray! Here you are! Aww. The cat rushed to Leo, who picked him up and ran singing him joyfully. First I will... Imagine the situation, there is Sandra, and I go to the cat, like, I just go straight to the cat and pet the cat, like, it's just so funny. Forgetting everything else, I rushed to the sorceress I had been waiting to see for so long. Sandra, my dear, finally! If I had known it would take so long, I wouldn't have left without you. She embraced me and I pressed my cheek against hers, basking in the warmth and joy of her presence. I miss you too, I'm glad I could visit my sister, but all my thoughts were here with you. Then I pet Nosferatu behind his ears and ask about Vlad. Sandra, have you seen him yet? Yes, he's here, but he couldn't come yet. It's fine, we will go to him ourselves. Welcome. Oh, it's Miriam. Would you like some tea, fresh and aromatic? I just brewed it. Wow, Miriam, when did you fly in? Not long ago. I heard Zio that you had with her ticket. Yes, a little. Suddenly, Miriam came over and hugged me earnestly. I'm so grateful to you, if it weren't for you. But then, feeling embarrassed, she stepped back and adjusted her cold. I will get the tea. Oh. Well, I'm so happy for her. On the doorstep, old man Paladi appeared. Oh, our guests are here. Miss Sandra said that you would be visiting. On behalf of the Romanian delegation, you are always welcome here. Following him, Garnish's widow entered the room with Gardenia in her arms. Oh, I didn't know the cat would be coming with you. What a surprise. She approached Leo. The cats perked up their ears. They don't really like each other. <laughs> Aww. Gardenia sniffed and fondly leaned out to Nosferatu. Amazing, after yesterday's incident, she has been very wary of strangers. This is the first time she has been curious and not trying to hide. Although she liked Nosferatu from the very first meeting, too bad it's not neutral. I'm afraid we may have overdone it with our um, matchmaking. It's been a while, maybe now they can become good friends? Nosferatu, what do you say? Will you be friends with Gardenia? The cat twitched his whiskers thoughtfully. <laughs> oh, this is so cute. Let's be friends. Purned amiably and bent towards the other cat. She the Molly looked away, but her eyes lit up with joy. Aww. Well done, Nosferatu. The two of you will have much more fun together. I'm so happy for my little one to have a friend. Can we let them play? Aww. The cats were sent down, and it wasn't long before they were chasing after a stray feather together. I will stay with them until they get used to each other. You go ahead to Vlad. Sandra led me along, however she didn't go inside herself, thinking it would be better for me to talk with Vlad alone. Wow. I stepped inside. My eyes hadn't adjusted to the darkness yet, but I heard a rustle. Lad? In the semi-darkness, a shadow that appeared in front of me, powerful wings carefully pressed to its back. Oh, yeah, because he's a demon now. Hello, Seal. I walked up to him. Raising my hand, I run my fingers along the edge of his wings. You don't have to hide them. I'm not afraid. Sandra said they took Rafaela, so now we're still like this. So what? I don't care. Yes, Rafi couldn't stay in our word, but I hope they will find a solution. And if not, it doesn't matter. It was just an illusion. Others may need it, but your friends don't. We care about the real you, not your appearance. 
Finally, she said that. Finally. That seemed like he wanted to say something but changed his mind. It's just a shame you have to be locked up where there is so much going on and we are in such an interesting city. Let's gaze clouded with the dark mist. Mehmet the Conqueror city felt his spirit everywhere here, in every stone. Yes, it can be quite enticing, like bait in a deadly trap. Oh, why are you so mad? I should be protecting you from him, but instead, I will remain here, completely useless, while he weaves his web around you. See guys, that's what I'm saying when he has red flags too. And everyone is just focusing on Mehmet. Well, obviously, understandable. But he's very, very possessive. And I get it that he wants to protect us and help us. But this is just a little too much. Like, stay in your lane. We are just friends, okay? Chill. What do you know about Mehmet? Is he like you, immortal? I don't know, but I think so. I can feel it. It seems he appears at sunset and disappears with the onset of darkness. But that's not typical for vampires. Maybe some other kind of dark one? No, there are beings that fear the day and those who can stand the night. But I don't know of any who only venture out in between in the twilight. Well, he's special. There is another exhibition this evening. Mehmet will probably be there. Noe told me to be cautious, not to avoid him, but to get to know him better. Noe follows reason. Sadly, when it comes to Mehmet, I can't. Red clenches his fists, his wings spreading sharply. Wow. I must be with you at this exhibition. The room inexplicably grew brighter, and suddenly... Um... Hi. What? You can go to the ball um, exhibition. Your fairy godmother is here and we'll take care of everything. Now you stood at the threshold and admired Vlad's new appearance with undisguised delight. Not bad, I would even say excellent. Noe, did you manage to steal the body after all? He put on an offended look. What do you mean steal? I kindly agreed to take it. The High Conceal really wants Vlad to remain visible, to go out into the city, in other words, to fulfill his role as bait. So they are using him? That's kind of messed up. And it turns out I'm the only one capable of recreating Rafaela's illusion. The formula is really quiet, intricate. I had to dig around in her mind before I figured out how Rafi did it. And I must say, I was surprised. She is remarkably talented. It's a shame I didn't come up with it myself. Well, in the end, I figured it out and informed the council that I could take her place. Sending an auditum into the human world. Can you believe it? But they didn't have a choice. Of course, they had to pursue with me. But as you can see, I agreed and I'm here to save the day. Vlog and I hugged him. No, you were amazing. Absolutely. Well, what can I say? However, I need to leave for a while. I have some business to attend to. Vlad, buddy, remain as you are a while I resolve them. Nori disappeared. I headed to the living room. Sandra was there. We chatted for a while, then Leo joined us. He had already caught up with Vlad. Then it's time to head back to the Yali. Leo, I know that you are going to say, but just to be clear, unlike me, you are not obliged to stay with the Soydons. Since you know, don't talk much, as we are going together. Have you go get the driver to prepare the car? <laughs> she wants to send him away to be alone with Mehmed. <laughs> Leo went ahead and I hugged Sandra goodbye. Are you coming to the exhibition tonight? I will see you there. Yes, but I need your advice. I would like to wear something for the occasion. What do you think would be best? She showed me several options. Ooh. I really like this on you. It's romantic and mysterious. I'm feeling really drawn to it right now too. Thanks, you. 
I said goodbye to Sandra and Leo and I headed back to the yali. We failed to find any of the owners at home, so we went to our rooms. After resting for a bit, I sat down to work on the 7th portrait in Easy study. I patched up part of the canvas and tried to reconstruct a fragment of the image. And we are going back in time. After the Valachian whose brother Dracula had rescued his captured people from the army of the Ottoman Sultan Mehmed, a silent rivalry ensued between them for several years, but one day everything is changed. A long time has passed. At the hour when the night approaches dawn and it is darkest, the hospital stood on a hill by the river. In the valley below was his army, immersed in slumber. The chief warlord approached the ruler with a bow. How is the army's moral? They are holding up for now, but it won't last long. We cannot deceive ourselves. This weather is the very challenging. It's almost freezing but not quiet and there is a constant chilling dampness. Everything is soaked and there is no way to get warm. Forgive me my lord but perhaps we should abandon this campaign, turn back before it's too late. Saying this, the warlord hunched his shoulders involuntarily. However, the response was quiet and freedom. No. If we don't go into their lands now, if we don't destroy the bridges and roads leading to the border, when the first star comes, they will come to us, and that will be the end of Wallachia. But many soldiers have already fallen ill, we can't just stay in one place with this weather. The hospital cast a contemplative gaze over the river. We won't stay still, we will cross at dawn. But it will take a lot of time to be at boats for so many people. We won't wait for boats, we are cross on, on the ice. Across the Danube? But it hasn't frozen in a thousand years. And solid ice forming overnight, that has never happened in our land. This time, the hospital's voice was like steel. Prepare the soldiers. As you wish, my lord. The warlord bowed, retreat, retreating in fear. The hospital strode towards the river. He stopped at the very edge, facing the water with his back to the army. Suddenly, a wind wave formed. The sky darkened and hung over the valley in black, heavy clothes. The warlords vanished as the hospital reached out his hand toward Danube. He froze it. Oh my god. And the water began to freeze. Starting from the banks, the ice moved toward the center quickly, relentlessly, crackling and listening so that his ears rang. It instantly swallowed and choked the mighty, rushing waters. Wow, that's impressive. The turbulent and unruly just moments ago, they submitted and froze, becoming smooth glass. And very quickly, the mighty Danube found itself imprisoned in a shell of dark ice. The path to the Ottoman land is clear. He scares me. He's scary. I know he just wants um, the best for his country, but still, he's so scary. Several weeks later, at the hour when night reached the peak of its darkness, the hospital stood on a hill. Oh my god. I woke up. There was a lot of lingering emotions and questions from what I had seen. But a glance at the clock made me rush to prepare for the exhibition. The second event of the forum was taking place along the Ushkudar waterfront. Many paintings and art objects were on display, but according to the organizer's plan, the central exhibit was the Maiden's Tower, which looked spectacular from the waterfront. Our full group was there. Noe was incognito again, hosting the Romanian booth. 
Oh, I could talk about art for hours. And not just about art. I wonder which strange room the old man is sleeping right now. <laughs> and the while he stayed close to bed. Mr. Pala did take a break and let others speak. I'm so glad that Val could come with us. He's obviously interested in the exhibition. Leo and Sandra weren't art enthusiasts, but they were fully enjoying the atmosphere of the reception. Which pastries do we still have to try? None. You have tried them all and now you are on your own second round. Who is stopping us from going for a third? Ezel and Ivan were busy but found the time to walk over and greet me. A wonderful exhibition. Thank you for the evening. You are here, which means it's already a success for me. Aww. I hope tonight won't involve any duets for your attention, Miss Seal. Just in case, Ivan, try not to give anyone any ideas. At the Bulgarian booth, I unexpectedly run into Daria. I'm happy with the organization here. Do you know that Asin didn't come? Her husband is here, but not her. I don't know. What concerned me more than anything else was the absence of a different guest. Throughout the exhibition, I remained in a state of vogue tension, waiting. When will Mahmoud appear? But the gathering was already coming to an end, and he wasn't there. Oh, what if Mahmoud actually got hurt on the ship back then? He isn't going to show up at all anymore. He's hiding and plotting something. Um, what if he got hurt? Until then, I was almost certain he was safe and sound. The calm demon of the rest of the family and the fact that this wasn't the first time he had disappeared made me think so. But now my confidence was rapidly demonizing. Ezel and Ivan approached the microphones. We present the centerpiece, the star of the evening. The Maiden's Tower, one of Istanbul's most beloved symbols. It has served as a prison and a lighthouse, a heaven for free-spirited artists and a place of confinement for those sentenced to death. Is it pointed to one of the exhibition paintings? The mood for the tower is captured perfectly on the canvas by the artist Ayvazovsky. Golden rays of sunset romance. Yeah, waves are rocking a boat, some guy is whisking women away into the unknown, that's romance for you. Good paintings like life itself are always multifaceted. Last time we honored the distinguished representatives who supported the forum financially. But today we want to celebrate and thank our co-organizers from the Ministry of Culture. Our colleagues' assistance is invaluable. You wouldn't believe the amount of paperwork and the premise necessary to make all of this happen. He pointed to the group of men and women. They received a round of applause. After finishing the official speech, even an easier approached them. Sherkan joined the conversation and before long, the phrase Soydan family act was mentioned. I became curious and walked closer to them, eavesdropping. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, as a token of gratitude for your assistance to the forum, we have decided to give you a special gift, especially for your group. There will be an execution to the Maiden's Tower abroad, the Soyan family act. Followed by dinner at the top of the tower and the highlight of the evening, a belly dance performance. Yes, yes, by the same group that collaborated with us in promoting dances as a national treasure. Belly dancing? Why didn't you warn us earlier? This is the first time I'm hanging with myself. It was a last minute addition as the suggestion of the dance group's leader was the problem. Belly dancing, everyone knows the kind of thoughts such dancing arouses. Oh, calm down, are you projecting? It's a form of art and an important cultural practice in Turkey. Regardless, such dancing was historically intended only for the eyes of the master of the house, the husband or close friends. It's an outrage that today they turn into a show for everyone. For the record, I don't fully agree with him. Belly dancing is very intimidating and sensual. It shouldn't be for the public eye. Well, I guess I support tradition. Yes, and the women who perform it in public, they... 
calm down. Shurikan, please, let's not offend anyone. You have made your opinion clear, but not everyone in Turkey shares it. Besides, you and I won't be attending this dinner anyway. Even we'll take the group himself, so we won't see the show. No, now I definitely want to go. He's so weird. So he's interested after all? Hmm. If you are so hostile to the idea, then maybe you shouldn't. I'm not going to make a scene and ruin your dinner. I just want to talk to these women. To explain to them that they shouldn't disgrace themselves and their families like this. Oh yeah, you are going to the belly dance performance while your wife is at home? Really? Lecturers aren't part of our evening schedule either. May I remind you that we are sailing abroad or family's yacht, so you can hardly refuse me. Fine, just please keep things civil. Someone behind me tugged at my hand. Siyosh, come here. Did you hear that too? What a disaster. Shekhan is going along. So what? Do you think he will actually harass the dancers? No, but at least one of them will suffer anyway. His wife, as seen secretly, practices belly dancing. And now I remember she told me about the performance at the maiden's tower. That's why she's not here. Drama. Oh, we need to warn her somehow. I have been calling her all evening, but she's not answering. Please go with them. Find her before Shurkan does. But why me? You are her friend. I can't. I had a conflict with that even guy and he won't let me go along. But you are a guest of the Soydan family. He won't refuse you. What's the worst that could happen if he sees her? They will argue and then they will make up as usual. Are you serious? Like, are you that dumb? Is it like not clear for you that he is very abusive and clearly very hard on her? So I don't think they will talk it out. See, that's the problem with this MC. She has a zero self-awareness and she is just so annoying sometimes. On the other hand, Lala in the past, she's such a sweetheart and she's much, 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 much more clever than the present um, Lala. What are you even saying? I can't believe she said that. Like, I actually can't believe she said that. After she saw everything, like, to every conversation, like, you can't read the room. No, you don't know their family. They are extremely conservative. Exactly. And they will consider it a real disgrace. Yeah, they will get a divorce or something. Like, this is huge. Meanwhile, even and the group were already boarding the yacht. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to have as seen, but I was afraid to go alone. Oh my god, please. Leo. I spotted him nearby and caught him over. We explained the situation. It's very close. It's less than a thousand feet and there is a clear line of sight. If you are willing to sail, it's possible. We will keep an, we will keep you inside, and if anything happens, we will be right there. There you are. Yeah, I will go. Thank you. I rushed to the pier. Ivan was surprised by my request, but he was too busy to inquire further and just agreed. Ooh. The tower was indeed very close, and it took us longer to cast off than it did to sail. On the island, Ivan began to share historical facts with the group, and I slipped inside. Everything was set up for the dinner in the room on the top floor, but Asin was the only dancer I saw there. Oh, she looks so pretty. Like, her dancing clothes are not even that provocative, so... See you, I was hoping to see you among the guests. How about your husband? Her face went pale as a sheet. But Shekhan wasn't supposed to. But he's here. He can look out the window. She rushed to check. Oh, I'm done for. Just don't come out. Swap with someone. There is no one to swap with. I'm all alone here. And I can't just come out. The department controls all of our trips and shows performances. If I were in the evening, it will be a disaster for a collective. She looked out the window again, wrinkling her hands in despair. See you, please. Greet them now instead of me. You don't have to dance. Just welcome them, escort them to the table, show them hospitality. The dance was planned for the very end after dinner. By then, we will have time to bring another dancer. Take a costume here and cover your face with a veil. They won't recognize you. 
but Shekhan would know me by my hair and body right away. He might even recognize my scent from a distance. Talking about abusive relationship. I sighed heavily and nodded. Since I have gotten involved in this, fine, let's do it. Thank you, you have saved me here. Pick whatever you like. Then she helped me with my hair. I misclicked. I wanted to get the other one. Oh my god. Whatever. While I was getting dressed, Asin explained what I needed to do and say. And when we were done, she wrapped herself in a thick shawl and hurried downstairs. I approached the window and saw her figure slipping onto the family yacht while everyone was occupied. Yeah, good. She will hide in one of the cabins and make it back to the mainland. Even with his hands gathering the scattered participants together, they will be coming up here soon. I walked to the door ready to greet the guests appropriately. But time passed and no one came up. There were no footsteps on the stairs either. I returned to the windows and was stunned. The ship had sailed away and was heading toward the shore with the entire group on board. Did they just leave me there? Meanwhile, the wind had picked up and the waves were much larger and stronger, crashing against the rocks on the shore. The island appeared completely deserted, much like a tower. What? No. I rushed to the exit, but the door swung open. See you. Oh, hello. For a moment, we both stood frozen, staring at each other. What are you doing here? Oh, come on. What am I doing here? Do you, do you really expect me to believe just like last time that I accidentally ended up at dinner with you? Do you not know how to invite someone without kidnapping or trapping them? He took a step toward me, but I backed away. Don't come any closer. <laughs> Listen, I genuinely have no idea why you were here. Why are you alone in that outfit and why is Asin? I came for her performance. Excuse me? My initial wave of anger subsided and I managed to regain my composure. For the performance? <laughs> Someone is jealous. Yes, it's her debut and she was very nervous. I decided I would support her a little one. Because I knew no one else would support her in this. Oh, that's so kind. And you didn't set anything up with Shurkan or anyone else to get me here? No, I didn't set anything up. Like, how could he set that? Like, how? I know that he could be lying. Just explain it to me. How? But his confusion and surprise were so convincing that I was inclined to believe him. Thank you. So how did you get here? Your family yak said off for some reason, leaving me here alone. Mehmed walked to one of the windows. A storm is starting. The captain must have realized it and hurried to take the group back. I couldn't take it anyone approached the window as well. Outside, dark clouds were indeed gathering and the waves were getting higher and stronger. But how did you get here? There aren't any other boats here. Shall we sit down since everything has turned out this way? Let's talk it over calmly. He carefully examined me from head to toe. You look stunning in this outfit, Seal. Please give me a little of your company. Gladly. Okay. I said that, but I remained standing in place. I felt very uneasy. I had been waiting for this encounter all evening and yet I wasn't prepared. Mehmet moved closer and took my hand. I wanted to pull it away, but he did not let go. His fiery gaze locked onto mine. Stop. We have little time. Let's not waste it on games. We are not 18 anymore. If you want to be with me now, just be. Mehmet spoke calmly and seriously, and his seriousness resonated with me. I suddenly realized that I didn't want to waste time on games either, so I said, I do, I want to be with you. He smiled ever so slightly. There was none of the arrogance or superiority in his smile that I had often seen in the past, 
Mehmed looked at me, unable to take his eyes off me, and his gaze was so intense and red that he revealed himself to it too. I could see that my attire had evoked very intense feelings in him, but it wasn't about how revealing or seductive it was. It was something completely different. Mehmed walked across the room and stopped at the corner with cautions, then sat down. Will you dance for me? Oh my god! Please? <laughs> he asked so nicely. Yes, I will dance. I approached him. I stopped just close enough for him to have a clear view of me. There was no fear, no doubt. There were only my eyes and his, not letting go of each other. Slowly and gracefully, swaying my hips, I raised my arms. I took a few unrestrained steps and twirled around. Then I shimmered my shoulders. I reached out my hand to him and immediately put it back with a mischievous smile. My waist swayed, pulling my hips, chest, my whole body along with it. My hair fluttered in all directions, and the jewelry on my waist and ankle moved and jiggled. There was no music, but outside the waves roared, and that sound was enough for me. My body seemed to be urging me to dance from a place deep within. I didn't take my eyes off Mehmet. I held his gaze, played with him, enticed him. Every movement was for him and about him, like a burst of freedom, surge of revelation. Telling him about the feelings he stirred within me that I couldn't put into words. He too stared at me unwaveringly, seeming not to blink. And in his gaze I saw a combination of fire, passion, admiration, and at the same time, something dark and oppressive hidden deep within his soul. With a sudden jerk, Mehmet got up and walked toward me. I stopped catching my breath. Time froze, almost disappeared. As he watched my eyes glisten, my chest rise and fall, and my heated skin shimmer. You are a queen. And you are my king. By blood and by nature, there aren't any others like you. I know. Trust me, I know this for sure. Outside, the wind continued to howl, but suddenly there was another strange noise mixed in. We walked up to the window and saw that the Bosporus was rapidly freezing over. What is going on? Vlad. With the defeating crack that made my ears ring, eyes extended from the shore of the mainland toward the island, island and Vlad was following it very rapidly. What is he doing? He walked with his gaze fixed on a single point, the tower, that was his target. His speed increased and the eyes barely had time to form beneath each of his steps. I looked at Mehmet with fear. He stared at blood, unwavering, his face growing darker. His fist clenched, lips stretched on, it seemed he saw nothing but his enemy. When I looked back at the Bosporus, what was nowhere to be seen. The water had frozen right up to the island in sharply peaked waves. At that moment, an ear splitting crash came from behind me. I turned around. The window was shattered to pieces. And there stood Vlad. Oh, no. 